Hi, I'm Tim from realwebsitehints.com. If you want to get started making a WordPress website, you're in the right place. It doesn't matter if you want to make a WordPress blog or whether you want to make a website for your business. The starting point is the same place. In this video, we're going to learn how to set up and configure the fully customizable version of WordPress. There's another version of WordPress that you can use, which is hosted at WordPress.com. The problem with that version is that it's not fully customizable. You're limited by which plugins you can use and which themes you can use. In this video, I want to show you how to set up the fully customizable word version of WordPress so that you can get the look and feel of the website you want, as well as exactly the functionality that you need. I've included links to all of the tools that I talk about in this video. Some of these links are sponsored links, and they help support this channel and cost you nothing extra. So if you're ready to build a great WordPress website, let's go ahead and get started with how to install and configure WordPress. The first thing that we need to do to build our website is to have a place to build it. And I think that the best and easiest way to do it is to build it live online on a hosting company. I do have some alternative methods and you can see those in the description below. But if you're just getting started and you want the easiest and best way to do it, just go ahead and build your site live online. Now, if you already have hosting that you're happy with, you can go ahead and skip this section. But in this section here, I'm going to show you how to get hosting for your website and how to install WordPress. So my recommended company, and I've got a link to them in the description below, is SiteGround. And you can see the plans that they've got here. And these guys are really great. They don't give you anything extra that you don't need. And they provide a really great service. Plus, I found their support to be amazing and really nice and friendly. Um, and then they also, what I like about these guys is they show you what the price goes up to. Um, some other hosting companies try to trick you by just showing an introductory price and you think that it's, it's that way forever, but it's not. Um, and I think that for most people, the startup standard price here is going to be just fine. If you need additional space and your site starts growing really fast and you get a lot of visitors, you can very easily move up to another hosting plan, so no problem. So just go ahead and click Get Started. And then if you want to register a new domain, you can do that here, and that's included free on sign up. And if you already have a domain, then you can enter it in here, and it'll give you the instructions to forward that domain information to your new server. But let's go ahead and just create a new domain. I mean, it's free after all. And then just click Proceed. Okay, then just go ahead here and fill out all of your billing information. Um, there are a couple of extra things down here. We've got domain privacy, which is a dollar a month, and this will um, hide your personal information from your Whois site, so we'll have generic information that way your phone number and your address aren't online. I think that's a good idea and a good thing to do, and it's really not that much money to add. And then you've got hack alert monitoring, which will monitor your site for malicious code. And unfortunately, that has kind of become an issue recently. So that's uh, I would say that either one of those are optional. I recommend um, putting both of them on. I think it's just good protection for yourself, but you can skip those if you choose. And then just go ahead and click Pay Now. So then after signing up for your account, you're going to be asked to verify your order, and they may have you either do an online chat or give you a call on the phone. And this is just part of the great security measures that SiteGround takes to make sure that your credit card information isn't being stolen and that you're a valid person. I mean, SiteGround really takes security seriously, so that's really important. Um, you're going to receive two emails, one of them that looks like this, and that's going to have the username to use to log into the SiteGround area which is different than your WordPress website, and then the password that you created during login. And then the second email you'll get is if you registered a new domain name, they're just going to ask to verify the information that you filled out is accurate, so that they've got accurate information about who registered that domain name. So then let's go ahead and get started, and we do that by opening up this email here and clicking to log into the customer area. And then I've already signed in once here, so it's already filled out my information, but you'll just have to enter in your information and the password that you created, and then click Sign In. So here we are on our hosting companies panel. So then to get started, we want to go to My Accounts. And then this has all of the information about the domain name that we signed up for here on the bottom, um, as well as the other information about our hosting company and email, if you want to use email on your domain. And to get started, we go to cPanel. So this here is the cPanel. There's not really much you need to do here. The only thing we really need to do right now is install WordPress on our computer. So to do that, 
We can either click on WordPress auto installer here or down here. So let's go ahead and click on that. And what's great about this installer is that it's going to install WordPress correctly. It's going to make sure that everything's configured just right for what you need. So let's go ahead and just click on install. So we can go ahead and set up our protocol here. So that's whether it's HTTP or HTTP www or HTTPS or HTTPS www. So that's really a preference that you're going to have is whether you want the www to appear or not. So in this case, I'm going to have it not appear. I'm just going to use the default. And then you want to choose the domain name that you want it to be installed on. I only have one domain on this account, so it's just going to install directly to that. And this is if you wanted to have it installed on a separate directory so that your main WordPress install was not at your main URL. I don't recommend that. For most people, you're just going to want it right at your regular URL. So we're just going to leave that alone. And then you want to fill out this information here, and it's going to auto-enter it into WordPress as part of the install. So we've got our site name. And then you do need to give your site a description. And you want to make that something related to what your website is about. Um, we do not want to enable multi-site, so don't worry about that. And then we want to set up the admin account, and this is going to be for the WordPress setup. And again, I want to recommend that you use a robust name here. You don't want to use something like admin. You want to use something creative uh, that somebody isn't going to be able to guess easily because unfortunately there's hackers out there and they will try every basic username and they will try every basic password and every common password um, and other password combinations. So you really want to use strong username here and a strong password. And then building websites, I definitely recommend that you use a password storage system of some kind. I personally use LastPass, so you can consider using LastPass, um, but there's other ones like one password also that you can use. But definitely you want to use something robust. And then you want to enter in an admin email here. I recommend using um, an email address that's separate from your website for now, and then you can change it to your email address at your own domain name later on if you want to. But for right now, use something that you have access to. And then select your language. And then this first plugin, I re definitely recommend that you install, which is the limit login attempts. And that will help protect your website from hackers trying to log in and just use every single password and username combination. So that's a good one to have. And then we don't want to install a theme because we want to be able to pick our own theme. And the advanced options, uh, you don't need to worry about. And then just click install. And we've got this little data bar here that's showing us that the installation is taking place. And there we go. Now we know that the installation has been completed successfully, and um, it's been installed on our domain that we've created. And we've got this link here, which is to the administration area for our new website. You'll know that your site is up and running when you get an email that looks something like this. It'll have um, your unique link to log into your website, which will be your URL and then wp-admin, and then the username that you created when you signed up, as well as the password. So then if you used uh, something like LastPass, you're going to want to just enter in your username and information. I've actually already logged into the back end of this site once, so it's already saved. So I can just do autofill and then log in. And here we are. This is the WordPress dashboard where we're going to do all of the work on building our website right from this area here. We've got a place here where we can add um, posts. So this is for like blog posts. Media, this is where you upload pictures. And you can also upload pictures directly from the posts or the pages section. Pages where you're going to create web pages. Comments for users that use your site that make comments. Appearances has a lot of the different settings for the look of your website. Plugins, so this is where you add in the additional plug-in software that you might want to use, and we'll be adding some plugins to our website as we build it. This is the user section here where you can add users, change your password. Um, you can add various different levels of users. They don't all have to be administrators. They've got administrators, editors, writers, all the way down to just subscribers to your website. So that's the user section. There's the tools and then the settings, and you'll find most of the settings for um, many of the plugins you install, as well as general settings for our website will be in here. And the super cacher item here is something that SiteGround installs 
on your website. It's a plugin to help your website run faster. So I definitely suggest leaving that there. So the first thing we're going to want to do is clean up some of the added things on our website that we don't need. So one of those things is going to be the plugins. So we'll click on installed plugins. And we're just going to remove the extra items we don't need. Akismet is used uh, for taking away junk spam. Um, you do need to sign up and get an API key for that. I'm going to leave that on there because usually within a few months of having your website, if you have an active website with a lot of people commenting on your website, you're definitely going to need to activate this and get this running. It's probably the best way to keep spam comments from popping up on your website. So we're going to leave that there. And this Hello Dolly plugin, not really useful. So we want to have a nice, clean, neat site. So we're going to get rid of that. I'm just going to do delete. And then you want to say yes, delete these files. And then we're going to delete the Jetpack from WordPress. I haven't found this to be a terribly useful plugin. You might find it a useful plugin, but for right now, we don't need it. You can always install it later. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. Okay, then there's this Limit Login Attempts plugin. This is actually a really great plugin to have. It helps keep your site safe by limiting the number of times that somebody can attempt to log in with a wrong password. That does include you, so just make sure you don't lose your password and you've got it in there. But this is a really great plugin to have. It's one of the sort of basic things you can do to keep hackers off of your site, and it's already installed and loaded on your site, so that's great. We're going to leave that there. And we're also going to leave the SiteGround Cache Press plugin, which will help your site run faster on this on the SiteGround server. So we're going to leave that there. Next thing we want to do is we want to go to the um, pages, and part of every WordPress install is usually a um, test page, but actually on this install there isn't. Okay, so now we want to go up to the posts here, and um, there's a post that's been put in by SiteGround, and actually even WordPress normally has a standard post that's put in here. And we just want to trash this because we don't want anything extra on our site. We want everything clean, neat, and ready to go. Comments usually has something in most WordPress installs, but it looks like SiteGround for this install has already removed the default comment that's put in by WordPress, so that's great. And the next thing we want to do is to check our permalinks. And in a future version of WordPress, they're supposed to make this happen automatically. But for right now, we need to make sure that we check this setting here. And you want to check post name. And so that's going to make a what they call a pretty link for our website. So all the posts and pages are going to have your URL. And then they're going to put in automatically the name of the post or page that you have. And this is going to help with your search engine optimization. So we want to make sure we check that. And you want to make sure you click Save Changes at the bottom. All right, the next thing we want to do is make sure that our site has um, a, a name set up for it. So we're going to go to General. We're going to give it a site title. So this site is the Make a, make a Website Course site. And then you can give it a tagline here. WordPress address and the site address. We've got our email address. This is going to give us notifications from our plugins. Later on, we're going to install a backup plugin um, that's going to use this email address, as well as things like comments um, for our website. So if you want to change this from the default admin at makeawebsitecourse.com, I actually recommend that you uh, that you do that. You might want to, especially in the initial stages, until you set up this email address, you might want to just use your standard email address. So for right now, until uh, I configure this email address, I'm actually going to use my address just to make sure I get all of the messages that come in from my website. Okay, man, that's all the uh, changes we're going to make here. So we're just going to go down and click on Save Changes. Okay, so then the next thing is we're going to go to Reading. And until we get our site set up and ready to go, what we want to do is we want to discourage search engines from indexing this website. So this is an attempt by us to keep the search engines from looking at our site and making it part of their search results. So we definitely want to turn this on before our site goes live, but until our site goes live, we just want to turn that off. So we're going to click on that and save changes. Okay, and one other thing we want to do is we want to remove some of the extra themes. Again, in an effort to keep our website 
simple and easy to use. We don't want to have extra themes that are going to be asking us to update them all the time or just potentially causing issues with our site. So we're going to cl cl delete all of these themes. It does take a little bit of time to do this. Fortunately, they don't have a delete button right here. You've got to step into one. So I'll show you how to do one or two of these. So what we want to do is we want to activate the 2015 theme. This is the theme made by the WordPress developers. And oftentimes these uh, 20 something themes, as they've been known throughout the years, are a good um, base theme to have on your website in case you've got a problem, you might want to switch to this as a default theme. So we're going to leave this theme here and we're going to delete the rest of these themes here. So in order to do that, you're just going to click on theme details and you're going to click on delete and then say OK. And I'll show you one more. That's the same process. Just click and delete and say OK. And then just go through and clean up all the rest of these themes except for the 2015 theme or the 2013 theme, doesn't matter which one you leave on there. And there we go. Now we have all of the basic configurations set up for WordPress. Okay, so now we've got WordPress installed and configured on our server. The next step is to start building our website. If you're already watching this video as part of a playlist, the next video will be starting shortly. If not, you can choose one of the tutorials below here or look in the description below for additional tutorials. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can come back and find these tutorials easily. And if you've got a question, go ahead and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.